Tell you what, let's start a new segment right now. It's called Tuesday. What do we do on Tuesday? We get some work done. Ladies and gents, it's Tuesday time. Welcome back to another day of game development. I'm still waiting on Ryan to send through the data desk code for generating uh, shaders, which is happening over here. So I don't have that just yet, so I can't actually make any shaders, but how about in the meantime, I actually figure out what the flipping heck and frick goes into the shaders to begin with, you know? Let's just maybe mock up, like create like a mock-up thing on the CPU, like let's do this. And then eventually we can put it in a shader code. You guys wanna see what's on the other side of this whiteboard? I wonder what it's gonna be. That's right. Fucking nothing. Day. Nothing. Because it's Tuesday. And all my homies hate Tuesday. Come beast, my lord. Please do not give me bugs. We've said our prayer. Shaders. What are shaders? Wikipedia. Shader. The type of computer program originally used for shading in 3D scenes that now perform a variety of specialized functions in various fields within the category of computer graphics special effects. We're going to be using a little language called GLSL. Shaders? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. OneOpenGL.com. Getting started. Now, I actually kind of know how to use shaders, so this is going to be pretty, uh, this is, is going to be a walk of the park. Easy. Definitely know how to do all this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, of course, we can't actually access the shaders, so we're just gonna do it all on the CPU for now and then figure out a way to convert it into GLSL. Programming your physics? Yeah, it was this one. Right here, okay? Right here is where I talk about this stuff. And then someone commented, they were like, here's a nice little paper thingy. Maybe we can filter by um, comments I've responded to. I'm hoping I've responded to it. Search for procedural? <gasps> no way. No way. It's right here. Oh, it's too easy. I don't think this is it. I mean, it works a little bit. Let me just give you boys a quick rundown of what's happened. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to recreate this texture on the fly procedurally in game. Okay, so what I'm gonna need to do is gonna need to figure out a way of like generating a bunch of these little rock thingies. I mean, first of all, just creating like a base layer of like background, I think. And then we do a bunch of rocks and then we shade the rocks depending on the angle of the light, give it shadows, make it pop a little bit. So just have a bunch of little rocks kind of neatly packed in together and we shade them differently. And that'll eventually give us this effect depending on how light it is um of it just kind of going into darkness right it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge though because obviously this is uh this i drew this by hand it's gonna be difficult to recreate right the amount of just raw power i'm gonna have to make shaders is, is gonna be immense it's gonna be so immense that the game is going to be the sexiest pixel art game alive known to man i'll say it that's that's the goal here i want to place my testicles in a gutenberg press this book is written for creative coders, game developers, and engineers who have coding experience. That's us. Let's go. The basic knowledge of linear algebra and trigonometry. All right, I'm out. It's been good, boys. It's been good. Tell you what, be back here tomorrow. I'm not doing that joke again. <laughs> what even is linear algebra, dude? I don't even know. Oh, I can't wait to learn about shaders, boys. This is going to be so much fun. Holy shit. I've been meaning to do this for so long, but I've always just been way too scared and I like haven't had a good resource to like learn it. We got the whole book of shaders here. That's everything. This is going to be so fun fucking fun holy shit let's go it's the amount of things i'm gonna be able to do after this my god this is gonna be intense what is a fragment shader if you already have experience making drawings with computers you know that in the process you draw a circle then a rectangle and the process is very filming to writing a letter or a book by hand instead of instructions that do one task after another i think this whole gutenberg press thing is starting to click in my mind shaders are also a set of instructions but the instructions are executed all at once for every single pixel on the screen that means the code you write has to behave differently depending on the position of the pixels on the screen like a type press your program will work as a function that receives a position and returns a color and when it's compiled it will run extraordinarily fast parallel processing imagine the cpu of your computer as a big industrial pipe okay okay and every task has something that passes through it, like a factory line some tasks are bigger than others which means they require more time and energy to deal with we say they require more processing power because of the architecture of computers the jobs are forced to run in a series each job has to be finished one at a time a lot of computers usually have groups of four processes that work like these pipes completing each task one after another keeps things running smoothly each pipe is known as a thread cheeky little cpu okay got like four different threads pop open another one do something you can do them side by side and you can just go but now from my current understanding before i even go any deeper into this book what shaders are right it's just things on the gpu and it's kind of like just parallel processing taken to the next level and it's like in the thousands right of just things being run side by side we take a big pipe on cpu that has like four different pipes and you can just put through whatever the fuck you want, right? Shrink that down into a bunch of little pipes that do very small specific things in parallel. If you want to make good consistent code, then I'll spend hours debugging white screens.
routines get used to putting the point in your floats. So basically we just don't be lazy and just put whatever type it should be. What do we got? Who knows? I mean, it's still working. That's just red. And red and green, what does that make? It makes yellow. What about all of them? That's white. Red and blue, pink? Yeah, pink. Try coming out the line eight and not assigning any pixel value to the function. Defaults to white. Try making a separate function that returns a specific color when using inside main as a hint. Here's a code for the function that returns a red color. Vec4, red. Return, Vec4, red. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Speed up until you see a single color without flickering. <laughs> I'm sorry, boys. We can do this in game. By literally just coming in here. What do we got? Global OpenGL shaders. This is the fragment. So technically, okay, if we go, let's do something cheeky. Times equal 0.5. That should just make everything half as bright. Yeah, look. Yay, shader complete. Let's go. So this is actually rendering a texture. So if we alter this, this is gonna alter the player. And there we are. That is editing the textures. All of these have been edited. All right, let's get rid of that. Get rid of all the code. The following code structure is going to be our fence. In it, we visualize the normalized value of the X coordinate. STX in two ways. One with a brightness, observe the nice gradient from black to white. The other by plotting a green line on top. In that case, the X toy is assigned directly to Y. Don't focus too much on the port function. We will go through it more in detail in a moment. Okay, port a line on Y using the value between zero and one. What do we got here? ST, so that right there is the quads. ST.X, color, Vec3Y. Quick note, the Vec3 type constructor understands that you want to assign the three color channels with the same value. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Like, so it's going R in color, the rest of the three it's just going to be one. You will come back over and over to the space between zero and one to master the art of blending and shaping this line. This one-to-one -one relationship between X and Y or the brightness is known as linear interpolation. From here, we can use some mathematical functions to shape the line. For example, we can raise X to the power of five to make it a curved line. All right, so let's just figure out how this line's been drawn first. So we got plot ST, plot a line on Y using the value zero to one. Okay, so in this case, we're using ST as just like a map of the entire thing, right? So zero, zero, one, one, X, Y. Y is gonna be equal to the X. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, what's this? Don't actually know. And then the absolute value of Y take away X, which just gives us the gradient. Cool. Now we know how to use colors to define. It's time to integrate this with our previous knowledge in GLS. So there's a very useful function mix that lets you mix two values in percentages. Can you guess what the percentage range is? Yes, values between zero and one. Check the following code at line 18. See how we are using the absolute values of a sine wave over time to mix color A and B. Mix color A and B with a percentage and that percentage is just the absolute value of a sine. Very cool, very awesome. If it's the absolute value of a sine, it's going boing, 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 isn't it? Let's plot this. Yeah, it's going boing, boing, boing. It's kind of cringe, bro. Why don't we make it not go boing? Let's make it go smooth. How do we make it go smooth, boys? Good question. Divided by two plus 0.5. Is that, was that it? Yeah, it is. That's right. Yeah, look at that. There we go. That's going zero to one. Nice, smooth, nice glowing. To think that like, that's literally been done from scratch, you know? That's so cool. Like this is literally a shader. That's not a fucking image. That's not a still video. It's mathematically calculated. So goddamn cool. Anyway, that is me at my end. We are three and a half hours into learning shaders and my brain is becoming hurty hurt. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to actually take this into the game and start working with it. Looking forward to it, looking forward to it. Alrighty boys, have an excellent rest of your day. Adios.